Hi, and welcome to another quick tutorial from epoxyjewelry.com. Uh, today, what we're going to do is talk about uh, epoxies and the differences in them. Um, I often get questions about what's the difference in using a two-part epoxy and using our uh, UV cure epoxy or glaze. And today I'm just going to talk about the differences in them. First of all, our uh, UV epoxy, which is our most popular product, and it comes in either the, the glaze like this or larger bottles. Um, this is UV sensitive, and uh, it, both of these, by the way, are the same product actually, uh, just in different containers. And it cures under UV light only, so you must have a UV light a minimum of 18 watts to use these. The little 9 watt bulbs uh, don't work. Okay? So that's these. Now, the advantages of UV epoxy over two part is that there's no mixing. You put it, you apply it to your item, and uh, it doesn't cure until you put it under UV light. So there's no work time. Because there's no mixing, there's also very little to no waste. Um, normally when you mix a, an epoxy there's some left over in the cup you know you make up more than you need so forth and so on it's also very quick 20 minutes under UV light and this is ready to handle uh, it's very durable product when it's done it's scratch resistant nothing is scratch proof but this is scratch resistant um, it's good for UV but not for permanent outdoor use don't put it on an emblem or something that's going to go on a car. It's also a doming epoxy, which means that when you apply it to a surface, it builds up a dome on top without running off the edge. As long as the edges are flat and, and, and a, a, a sharp 90 degree edge, it will go on top of the item without running off, and it builds up a dome in the middle like a little glass bubble. That's its forte. That is what it's best at, is doming. Uh, you can use it to fill uh, pieces like this. And, and here's one that I actually did with a gold coin in it. Uh, but that's not where it really shines. It really shines at doming. And it's good for polymer clay, as you can see here. Or you can uh, use it for other items. Like this is a... a um, steampunk type jewelry and uh, let's see I've got another steampunk one here that I really like too this is a brass one that really looks neat but that's what it's good at now what it's bad at is that it's chemically sensitive and by that I mean that it it's it's kind of a prima donna it doesn't like other chemicals so if you want to do say inkjet prints or something you must first uh, seal them. Now we have two products to seal them. I'm not going to go into that right now because we're just talking about the epoxy. But also, if you're going to do items like uh, the polymer clay, here's a couple of polymer clay pieces that were coated with it, you need to wipe them down with alcohol beforehand. Okay? Uh, if you don't, it will be sticky. And so if you ever have this product and it's sticky, it's always because there's a chemical. Metals. A lot of metals in manufacturing uh, actually use oils on them that you can't really feel, but that are on the metal, and that needs to be wiped off before using. So it's always a good idea. With the poly with the uh, UV epoxy, al alcohol here, uh, your isopropyl alcohol, is your best friend. Just wipe it down before you do it. Now, then we've got um, two-part epoxies. These are a little more versatile uh, than the UV epoxy in that uh, there's, there's different things that you can do with it, and I'll get into that. Uh, uh, the first is, is it is less uh, chemically sensitive. As long as you, your prints are water resistant, like on glossy photo paper, no need to seal it. You can put this, you can uh, put a print inside of a finding like this and then just fill it up okay these can also have uh, dyes and pigments added to them to make them colorful 
which you cannot do with UV epoxy. It does not want anything put into it, chemical-wise. Um, you can cast this epoxy in molds, and you can come up with cast items like this or this, and you can see here this has got a red dye put into it. I like this one here, and I like this one. I love the color blue, so that one's kind of nice. And you can also add... This is a dye. You can also add pigment so that it, the color would be solid, more like uh, the back of this one. Is. See, this one's actually two colors of solid pigment added to it. And this one, and this can have embedments put into the mold as well. I don't know if you can see these, but there's little fruit pieces in here. And those are actually polymer clay fruit pieces that was put in here. It's really good at that type of a thing. Uh, it also is, uh, our epoxy anyways, is very good at self-degassing. And what that means is, while it's curing, the bubbles come up to the surface and pop on their own. There's no need to use a torch or to pick them out with a toothpick or anything like that. This, chem this chemical here, this epoxy, will pretty much get rid of all bubbles on its own unless they can't get to the surface. Such as, if you put an embedment, like a coin or something, in there, if the bubble's on the bottom and it comes up and hits the bottom of the coin, it's not going to go to the surface and break, so it'll, it'll end up staying there. So if you're doing something that's perfectly clear um, and you were to put an embedment on in this, there might be a bubble because you cast it this way and the bubble tries to go up and it gets stuck. Anyway, otherwise it's, it's, it's uh, more self-degassing than most two-part epoxies on the market. Okay, also, both of these epoxies are extremely durable when they're finished. This here can actually be drilled, sanded, uh, carved, whatever you want to do to it when it's done. It's, it's hard, hard plastic. Uh, they are scratch resistant, very, very smooth. If the mold is glossy, the item coming out of it will be glossy. If the mold is matte, the item coming out of it will be matte too. That's another good thing about these. Um, so uh, that's that's the pluses for this box. So what's the minus on this? Well, it has to be measured. And ours is a two to one ratio. So you have to measure out both parts. Then you have to mix it. You have to mix it very well. You first mix it in one cup and then pour it into another cup and mix it again. The reason is, is you don't want any unmixed item in your casting or it may not harden. So you mix it twice. Because of that, there is a little bit of waste, but it's not much. Uh, and this is, this is okay for medium to small jobs. This, you can dome one item and put it away and you're done. There's no waste, there's no mixing, there's no measuring. Uh, this also takes 24 hours to fully cure. So if you're in a hurry, it's not that good. But the 24-hour cure is also why it self-degasses really well. Uh, and so you need to put it in a nice level place. And it's a good idea to, if you're, if you're doing something in a mold or something like that, it's a good idea to take a box or something and put over it just so that dust in the air doesn't stick to it. Anyway, that's the differences in these two epoxies. And I just get questions all the time about them, what uh, what they're good for. And again, here's some pieces done. This is the UV epoxy put on polymer clay. Here's another piece on polymer clay. Um, this one's actually polymer clay as well, and it's it was put in there after it was put in this finding. This one is just in a metal uh, pendant with steampunk type designs and then the two part again molded pieces like this like this um, oh sorry that's that's not it here's the other one here and stuff like this and you can get real creative so this one's a little less sensitive to work with because of the chemicals uh, but it takes longer and there's some waste this one is much quicker to work with and it's easy to work with as long as you're not dealing with any chemicals and it loves polymer clay um, 
it's perfect to build up a bubble on polymer clay and it's done in 20 minutes under uv light 